right, guys, we're going to do some movement breakdowns, like I said, for the wall walks, double unders, other versions of the workout. Check out K-Star at the beginning of this video. They'll give you solid, full body prep to go. We'll do the movements and tricks, and then we'll give you some other stuff as there as well. What's up, Mayhem family? Guess what? I've got a couple great ideas around getting through this workout more effectively and a couple ideas around recovery. So take a look. So believe it or not, the sneaky aspect of this workout is the hang archetype. So managing this interrotation and to a lesser degree this shoulder extension is a big deal, this press shape, internal shape. But the burnout here that's gonna come if I'm inefficient, if I can't be, keep my shoulders in a relatively neutral position and I start to default to this during piking, that is gonna be the bake out. And then it's gonna make it really hard to work up that wall and, and spend time in those positions. So, while well, most of us are thinking about the calves, which I've got a piece for afterwards. Let me show you the, the shoulders first. So band on the wall, and we're gonna do two of our classic bullies. So just hang it up to here. First, just hook the band here, and then wrap the hand behind your back. And all we're doing is just trying to remind your brain to have positions here. So take some breaths here, contract, relax, and just think about letting that hand come behind the back kind of reminding how to activate and give yourself range here. It'll make it a lot easier to get your double unders on. And all you have to do is kind of hit this position and relax. And just a minute or two, bounce back and forth. One minute here, one on the other side. Then we're gonna just turn this around because this is really a good way to work on this internal rotation piece. The second piece, you just slip it down to the elbow and you pin, and now we're just gonna open up the front of the shoulder so it's on the hip here. I'm not pulling it as far across the body, just on the hip, but what I'm trying to do is get that elbow to come up to the sky behind me. And what this is gonna do is make it easier for you to walk those hands back into that bottom position. So just hang out here for a second, take a few breaths, a few contract, relax, two or three minutes aside on both of those are gonna be plenty. So the idea here is, ah, oh, that makes it easier to hit this shape so that my rotation can be more effective, all right? Second kind of subtle piece. Obviously, I want you to be very warmed up. See if you can't get five to 10 minutes of easy cardio on a bike, on a rowing machine, doing something super easy, mouth shut, breathing through the nose, just to make sure that the legs are really, really full of blood, especially the calves. During that jumping, sometimes the piece that gets lost is that if you're a little bit short in the front of the hip, and the front of your hip is short, you end up having to pike and you're not able to be efficient. We're really looking at what's the minimum required to be springy in this position, but being short in the hip is part of the magic that makes this harder. So what I'm gonna do is just put a band on the hip, and I'm gonna step back into a big lunge, but here's the, here's the drill. We're not gonna hang out, I just want you to spend a second in this position. Squeeze your butt, get that hip open, play with these different shapes for a second, and then just take yourself through a lunge a little bit, just to make sure that this front of the line is open. What you'll see is that most people are not gonna be very limited overhead. We're not too worried about that. Our shoulder spin up on the ready state, easy to see, easy to find. We're hitting these positions, you know how to get prepped. But even in the finished position, we saw that Christy wasn't very far overhead in many of those. You didn't have to be the perfect carry overhead. So I'm not so worried about your overhead position. I'm worried about your internal rotation, and I'm worried about you just having access. Even the jump roping is really mid-range. Now, work on your breathing, be relaxed. Our kids at Mayhem have got you covered here for strategy. Tonight, after you do this, I want you to make sure that you've planned a long walk. Your calves are gonna be cooked, so I want you to go for a walk in the evening and again in the morning. What we're trying to do is reduce the session costs from this, so get a long walk in. You gotta put that on, you can't take it for granted. Obviously, some good old-fashioned calf rolling is gonna make a difference afterwards, but I've got one more piece for you for the front of the shoulder. So. Homework after, get a walk in the evening, get a long walk in the morning, reduce that session cost, roll out those calves. But, sneaky way to use a long roller. Front of your shoulders is gonna be cooked. If you have access to a barbell or a friend, 
they're gonna hold the shoulder here and just see if we can get some blood flow and get the front of the shoulder to unlock. That's obviously the place where people are gonna bake out. But if you hold a roller here, you can even get your weight of your arm here. You can just internally rotate through that and pin it down and get some motion. Or this direction, pin down with the other hand and just see if you can't shear through the front of the shoulder. This is a simple way of just getting that thing to unlock and get blood flow back in there. Look, relax, focus on your breathing, get as much sort of interrotation, relaxation as you can, and then the goal is to not let this thing ruin you for the next week's training. Because remember, we've got to get a little bit of work in early in the week so that we can hurry up and get ready for the next workout. Good luck, we'll see you after. 21.1, here we go. We're gonna do a little movement breakdown. We'll start with wall walk, we'll go to double unders, and then we'll hit the other versions of the workout as well. So, wall walks, we have not had this movement before, obviously, as we know. Whether you are not so pumped about it or thrilled, here we go, wall walks. What we're gonna recommend, you're gonna need the standards in those videos, check those out. We're gonna do a little bit more efficiency tips to help you maybe get some more reps, make it a little bit easier on you. There's two likely versions you can do. The first one is the press and reach at the same time. So Tasia's gonna reach up on the wall. As she presses, she comes up, walks all the way back. We had line, she had made it there, come back down and then fingers make contact and back down. So we'll notice with this version, the key is Tasia is pressing as she's reaching up the wall. So it's a little bit quicker, but it's gonna take more shoulder endurance and stamina and strength because she's reaching as she presses. So show one more time, Tasia. She's gonna reach up the wall with her feet as she presses there. Almost a mimics a more of an overhead press rather than a strict push up into a reach. It's gonna be quicker, um, but it's gonna, like we said, cause uh, her to use more energy and might not be quite as efficient later in the workout. But if you have that in your shoulders, go for it and use it as long as you can. If you get fatigued out, or that's not a good strategy for you, maybe because of where you're at with your fitness level or your arm length, that's what's gonna play into it as well. So you can go push up and then reach up the wall like that. A little bit slower, but more of a this plane pressing motion. And she's back down. One more time, Tasia. So press straight up, more of a push up style. She warmed that one, that's fine too. Make it easier on yourself and come back down. Last efficiency tip that's gonna be really huge is you, only your fingers have to make contact with this line. So if she's doing it, come back down for me, Tasia. Yeah. Imaginary line here, her fingers are in contact. She doesn't have to have her whole palm. She presses up. Go ahead, reach up the wall. Good, come back down. She's, once she makes contact with that line, she's coming back down. Once her fingers get here, she's dropping. That's what they did there with Carrie Pierce as well. Definitely do that. Reach out, get both fingers there. Once your fingers are there, let those feet drop. You're good to go on the wall walk. So recap, if you want to use that almost V push up, more of a handstand push up style as you reach to get up the wall, it's gonna be more fatiguing, but it's gonna be quicker. If you get tired out, you can do more of a worm push up or push up style as you reach up the wall with your feet, come back down. Regardless, once you get back down, your fingers make contact, let those feet drop, minimize tension. Minimize time under tension here. That's what's gonna be a game changer as you go. We'll talk about pacing with Luke here in a minute, but there's the wall walk. We're here with the tips and tricks for 20.1 and we're talking about the double under. So the double under in this workout is really gonna be where the focus of the rest is. So you wanna be using as efficient as we can with our form, nice and relaxed in the wrist, keeping our whole body relaxed, focusing on our breathing to minimize shoulder fatigue. So we're gonna have Jake do some double unders, show us some great form. Perfect, so he's staying nice and relaxed. The elbows are tucked in. He's utilizing his wrists, keeping the grip as loose as he can while also relaxing his entire torso to get that body prepped for those wall walks. Hey guys, welcome to 21.1. We're talking about the body weight version, which is very similar to the RX version, except for we're swapping out double unders for line hops. On these line hops, the focus is gonna be completely relax the upper body because we don't need it at all, and stay low on the jumps while making sure we avoid those no reps. So we're getting clear over the line each time. So when Jake jumps, he's getting clear over that line each time, trying to keep it quick and low as possible. Oh, there we go, that's some speed. Um, and just stay relaxed. Hey guys, we're talking through 21.1 foundation. So in this workout, we got bear crawl. Bear crawls, we got hands and feet on the ground at the same time, focusing on big steps. Uh, Jake prefers an opposite arm to opposite leg approach. So if we watch here, he's stepping out and getting those big giant steps as best he can. The main focus would just be speed. We're moving through these nice and fast as best we can to get back to those jumping jacks. 
So on these jumping jacks, we're looking for a consistent pace. Feet start together, hands come up over the head, clap above the head, and then back to our starting position with our hands at our side and feet together. Show us some jumping jacks, Jake. That's some great form. His hands are coming back down and touching over his head while his feet are touching and reaching out. Good job.